Today we are mending a Beko washer dryer ourselves. First things first, we need to unplug everything and then pull it out from the wall to get to the back. And the model number for this one is WDX854313W. Um, although it does also, hopefully this should work for a couple of other models as well. We're following the guide by Bob12241 on the washerhelp.co.uk forums. We're going to be as thorough as possible, so if there's anything that you want to skip, um, you can just jump ahead in the video to the part that you need help with. But um, there were some surprises for us, so I decided to cover absolutely everything in case you, like us, have never done anything like this before. The video covers tools, how to open the washing machine, diagnosing the fault, opening the circuit housing, removing the broken diode, putting in the new diode and testing, closing up the housing, and then closing up the washing machine, putting it back. Let's get started. The tools you're going to need to diagnose and resolve this problem are a multimeter, a D7 diode, a soldering iron, solder, something to remove the solder with, so ideally a solder sucker, and some tools to help you hold things in place. Cutters for the arms of the diode once you want to remove them, some pliers, and a screwdriver for getting in and out of the washing machine. We have ordered some D7 diodes from the internet which we hope will fix the problem. We got ours from Webby J123 on eBay as he was in Croydon which is near where we live. The only other supplier I found was quinspares.com in Ireland. As well as safety, removing the power cable gives you enough slack to be able to pull the machine further forward. Likewise, unclipping the freshwater and wastewater pipes let us pull the machine further forward so we could get to the back easier. There are five spots you have to unscrew and they all require a Phillips head screwdriver, the same as the wastewater pipe holder and then you just pull the top forward, it should fall forward. The motherboard housing is on the right and is held in place by two Phillips head screws. Some sticky tape attaching it to the wall and a sort of locator lozenge thing that goes through the wall of the machine. Before you can get the housing out you'll need to unclip the cables with uh, pliers to push through the connectors. On our machine there were two connectors, one either side of the panel hatch at the back. And once those are free, we're able to gently ease the motherboard housing out past the motor. We made note of where a sticker was to help us remember which way up to put it back in again afterwards. You should end up with five slightly shorter tapered screws that held the back panel on and three slightly taller flat-ended screws that held the components to the wall of the machine and the wastewater hose. Don't lose any of these. On to opening the motherboard housing. You shouldn't need any special tools for this. There's lots of plastic tabs to press and hold, but maybe some pliers would help. This one needs to slide in. All of these the sliders need to be on the top of plastic tabs and then should clip. Oh, this needs to go in as well. And it all clips back in place like that. So first of all, we're just going to check that these new ones work and this is how to use the this is our multimeter and I've got it set to the diode setting, which you can see is that symbol there. Um, the black cable probe is in the COM setting and the red probe is in the volt, ohms and MA setting. So on, on these um, diodes, 
there is a silver band which you can just about see there and that is the positive side that is the cathode um, and so to create a loop we need to put the negative which is the black onto that end of it um, and these two aren't connected they're just stuck with sticky tape which doesn't um, doesn't cause a circuit so uh, if we test these you can see that this the, the uh, meter jumps up to 365 um, which shows that this is working and if we swap them over and test the back of it so this is red to red black to black um, it just says one which also shows that that is correct um, that the machine's working and we'll do that on this one as well and then swap them back so black to red black red to black and it's jumped up to 365, 363. We're now going to use our multimeter to diagnose the problem, make sure it is the same situation as the one described on the washer help forum. Um, so the D7 diode is, you can see just here, um, it is marked out um, just here, this is where the D7 and the silver side is over here and the unmarked side here. So using the same machine as we used a minute ago, we'll now try and test if this one is working. Um, and so that noise isn't good. So that's, so what we should have had if it was working was something in the 6500 range. And just to test it the other way around, We've got, so on the working ones, we've got the number one. Um, and on this one, we have, again, the screaming noise. So it does seem like that is a short circuit. We need to get our circuit board out of its housing. So first I'm going to just gently remove all the wires from their plastic holders. Um, starting at the the root so that the the kind of tension is pulled out so I don't want to yank on anything and then there are these three clips um, at first I thought there was only two but there are three uh, so as you can see you can just sort of push them and the board will be able to be pried up so there's no screws to undo here but it takes um, both hands, which I currently um, have only got one hand available because I'm filming. If your board is different to mine, then this would be a good time to take a picture of your board and how the wires were at the beginning so that you can put them back again easily. I worked out how to film hands-free, so um, now I can work on the tabs. It'll be tempting to pull on the board, but don't do that, you don't want to break it. Um, I'm using a flathead screwdriver and then adding tension with this other tool here, um, and it just needs to snag underneath the edge of the board. And then on the second one, um, doing exactly the same. I thought there were only two tabs, so when I got to this point, I thought it would just pull free. Um, you can see it's just snagged, just gone underneath the edge of the board there. Um, and it didn't come through because there is a secret third tab. This is a little bit like um, when you're trying to get the back of a picture frame open. Um, here is the secret third tab under these cables. And as soon as I figured that out, found it, um, just needed a little press on it and the whole thing swung forward. So now our circuit board is free of its housing and we can see which part of the circuit on the back here where the D7 is actually soldered to the connections in the board here and here. You can see that the top one is our silver band cathode. We're now going to remove this diode so it's time to get our toolkit out. Um, you need your soldering iron and snips and um, if you've got the solder sucker then get that 
I however do not have a lot of these things so ideally you have a soldering iron station which it gives you somewhere safe to to place your soldering iron because it gets very hot um, I'm using the back of a plate because that's all I have um, and also I don't have a solder sucker I really wish I did it seems really cool um, so instead I am using a Brillo pad to just wipe the removed solder away it doesn't work very well but it does do the job I tested out using some kitchen roll to see if I could absorb the solder away um, but that just started burning the paper not not a good idea don't do that um, and you'll see my slightly disgusting looking piece of kitchen roll in the background um, just so you know what that is mostly because it looks super gross so if you can get a full kit I would recommend that um, I mean because just look how happy and serene these guys are um, as they're not setting fire to anything in their kitchen I've marked a little plus and minus on the board this will help me put the diode back in the correct way round the new one I'm just gripping the old diode with some needle nose pliers so I can put some tension on there with um, pushing against the board with my finger to kind of leverage it up so as the solder is melted by the soldering iron the actual leg of the diode um, is being pulled up so it's kind of getting pulled out of the, the glue as the glue is being melted you need to be careful not to put too much heat into the circuit board because that can, can the heat can conduct through and uh, and wreck your board so I'm trying to be quite circumspect um, I'm also wiping away any excess solder that gets stuck on the iron as I'm melting it this took a bit of time so I'm just going to jump ahead to when it actually released from the board which was quite a triumphant moment Hooray! I'm now cleaning up the excess as best I can just to try and make sure those holes that go right through the board are as clear as possible in order to get the legs of the diode through them Speaking of, here's our hero, the cathode on the right there. I'm just going to bend it to be the same kind of width as the, the gaps, the two holes that we're going to be bridging. Um, so I didn't actually capture any footage of the soldering part. Uh, the camera was, was not on. So I'm going to describe it. Um, so just checking there, our cathode goes to the little plus that I drew on the board there. Um, I don't know if your board will be different. Um, make sure that it is exactly the same as the one you're replacing. Look at all the solders on the back here. They're kind of flat on the board and then it's as if the leg of the piece has pushed up through a pool that's what you're looking for you don't want like a bobble or a kind of rounded blob it's got to be a meniscus in order to be a proper join so now it's soldered in and um, we left the legs long to help with the soldering and now just clipping those off to about the same height as all of the others I'm just using the cutter inside my pliers and now to test that it still works after we've been soldering so setting the multimeter back to the diode setting um, we are looking for that same 300 range that we had before and we have it so this should mean that our machine our washing machine is mended hooray time to switch it on and test it hooray it worked last step is to put everything back together again we'll start by putting the board back in its housing 
Um, there are little kind of nodules and holes which will help you line up the board. Again, trying to be careful not to pull on any of the components. And this circle on the bottom left is not lined up, so I um, need to nudge it over to the right. So I'm using the screwdriver in the like a gap in the board to help pull it across rather than the components. <laughs> that click surprised me. And one, two, three, that's all of our clips locked in place. And putting the wires back in the opposite order to how I got them out, making sure not to pull too hard on any of the wires connected to the board. This was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, so I'm glad I took a shot of the board beforehand to refer back to. For this step you need to find the five little pointy screws and three taller flat screws that you saved earlier when you opened the machine, a Phillips head screwdriver that fits into those, and your pliers. Finally let's get this board back into the washing machine and everything sealed back up. Got this clips in here. This should clip in. This one needs to slide in. All of these plastic tabs need to be on the top of the sliders and then, and then it should clip. Oh, this needs to go in as well. And it all clips back in place like that. Yeah, because there's the screw holes here on the on the like vertical side so there's the labels up at the top it goes in here on the side I think you've got to kind of shift this back a little bit to get it in there and it goes up against this back wall here Oh, the, sorry, the, the left hand wall. And then there's these clips here. Um, to get them off in the first place, I used a pair of pliers. So, which clips? The, the little, these little um, clips. They go into these little holes at the back of the washer. On this side, you can see it coming through. And it just clips in like that. That comes out there, and then if that's in place, these should screw in. And then there's just the screws, these little bit of ones. When we came to screw the hose housing back on we found that it didn't go through because the plastic thing had actually slipped so there is a hole in the metal that the screw goes through as well as the two plastic parts of the clip so you need to if this happens to you as well just need to nudge it back down um, to make sure that the metal hole is also being aligned with the two plastic parts and then you'll be able to screw the whole thing back together. That is the how-to video for fixing your Beko washer dryer. I hope this was helpful. Um, we couldn't find any other videos so decided to make one. Okay, uh, bye! <laughs>